Welcome to topic 7, in which we're going to look at Raman scattering. As I mentioned right at the beginning of this course, when light interacts with matter, different things can happen. The light can be absorbed, and that's what we've thought about up until now, or the light can potentially be scattered. There are two types of scattering we need to think about. The first of these is so-called Rayleigh scattering, where a molecule absorbs light, is excited to a virtual state, and then falls back down to the same state, emitting the energy that was originally absorbed. So of course the light, the energy of the light emitted is going to be the same of the light absorbed. We also have Raman scattering, where a molecule absorbs light, goes up to a virtual state, and then falls back down to a final state which is different to the initial state. When it emits energy as it falls back down, the frequency or the energy of the light is going to be different to the incoming light. Scattering happens when the energy of the incoming radiation does not match any energy separations in the molecule. In fact, most of the time, if the, energy, if the light doesn't match any energy gaps, it's just transmitted and goes straight through the sample. And, but a few times, occasionally, the light will be scattered. Scattering can be thought of as a two-photon process, as I just illustrated in the diagrams on this slide. So an, an, an incoming photon and then a scattered photon. Rayleigh scattering is often referred to as elastic scattering, so the energy of the photon which is emitted is the same as the incoming photon. Or Raman scattering um, is often described as inelastic scattering, so that means there is some energy transfer between the photon and the molecule. As I mentioned briefly there, the transmission is very different to scattering. In transmission, the light just goes straight through the sample, so if a light comes in from the left, um, goes through the sample, it will come out um, of the right hand side of the sample. If scattering happens though, the light is absorbed and then re-emitted in all directions. So it can come in from the left, but then it would be scattered in all directions. And this is a very important difference between just transmission of light and scattering of light. So scattering of light is useful for a variety of reasons, and one of these is Raman spectroscopy. This is a picture um, of a Raman spectrometer. Um, it's very similar to the one that we have in the chemical analysis facility in the department. And the setup is very different to an infrared spectrometer, for example, that you will have seen in the teaching laboratories. And the setup is different because it works in a different way, as we've just seen. Here we have a, a UV laser unit which creates um, laser light. It goes through some mirrors, um, reflected by some mirrors, goes, hits the sample. It's then scattered, reflected by a mirror, and then detected by um, a, a detector. This is very different to an infrared spectrometer, for example, where you, the detector is on the opposite side of the system to the original light source and the light goes through the sample. Here it's, you can see that it's scattered. Ready scattering also determines why the sky is blue. So molecules in the air, so for the major, most part it will be oxygen and nitrogen, scatter solar radiation. The efficiency of the scattering depends on 1 over the, the wavelength to the power 4. So this means that the shorter wavelengths, so blue light in the visible spectrum, are preferentially scattered towards the observer. So this is where, why the sky looks blue during the daytime. If we have water droplets in the form of clouds, these water droplets are lot, much larger than the molecules um, of oxygen and nitrogen, so they scatter all wavelengths equally. So because of this, they appear to be white. Some terminology now. So if we've got the, if we, the scattered photon is less energetic, so has lower energy than the incident photon, this means that energy has been transferred from the light to the molecule. This is known as Stokes scattering. If the inverse happens, so if the, the photon scattered is of higher energy than the, the incoming photon, this means the photon has gained energy from the molecule. This is called anti-Stokes scattering. 
Here's a little schematic here. We have the light coming in, and then we have the scattered light, which gives rise to anti-Stokes, Rayleigh, and Stokes peaks. So you can see already that we're going to expect three branches in a, in a Raman scattering spectrum. So what's happening in Raman scattering? Well, effectively, the electric field of the radiation, so the electric field of the light, um, distorts the electronic distribution of the molecule. And this induces a transient dipole moment, which we can write with the Greek letter mu. The dipole moment of the molecule um, is, can be given by this expression here, where E is the strength of the electric field. So how strong the light is, how strong the field is, this is effectively to do with how intense the light is. And alpha is the polarizability of the molecule. This describes how easy it is to distort the electron distribution of a molecule. Some homework for you now is have a read a little bit more about molecular polarizability. Make sure you're happy with this concept because it's a, it's a new concept. And then do go and find out a bit more about Raman the person. So he's quite an interesting, interesting story. And this brings us to the end of topic seven.